Hey everybody, I am back. I wanted to talk about, I don't know why it was on my mind today, but I wanted to talk about how I first encountered God and what that has turned into. I grew up in a church that taught me to believe that, that I had to love God so that I wouldn't go to hell. Point blank. Boom. So I was taught to be fearful of a bad fallout <clears throat> instead of uh, a relationship with God or anything like that. And it wasn't until I was in my very early 20s that it hit me that, no, I don't want to go to hell. You know, it occurred to me that a God who would send me to hell over um, whether or not I wore a denim skirt or denim jeans, uh, whether or not I cut my hair or whether or not I wore makeup or had pierced ears or anything like that was a hateful God. And that didn't jive with me. So for every, every fire and brimstone sermon I heard about how, you know, whatever I did that didn't please the pastor was going to send me to hell. It didn't jive with what I was reading in the Bible whenever I would, you know, read it on my own outside of church. And here's what I learned by striving to know for myself. I learned that God wants us to love him because he loves us. Not for fear of consequence or for desire of gain, but just because we are loved. I mean, think about it. We have kids. We don't want our kids to love them just because of the video games or toys or clothes or activities or whatever we provide for them. We want them to love us just because we're their mom. We're their parents. They're guardians. We take care of them. We love them. I appreciate being given the decision to love God on my own, not being forced into it with my hands behind my back or whatever. Uh, so uh, another thing too, that made me understand just how much he loves me because I really wanted to know why, like, what is it about me that you love? I mean, what have I done? What great feats have I completed? You know, what missions have I completed? And most of the time, nothing because in large portions of my life, I just suck. And I have to admit that. But the truth is, is he made me. He wants what he made back. He wants it back. Not only did he make me, but he knows me. He calls me by my name. I often wonder what he calls me, like what my name would sound like coming out of his mouth. But that's a totally different thing. But anyway, um, not only does he know my name, but he wants a relationship with me. He doesn't want to force me into that relationship. He wants me to decide for myself whether or not I accept being loved like that, whether or not I accept being loved in spite of. And that love from him was expressed in the laying down of his own life for me, for little old me. Um, not because I'm great, not because I'm going to be great, not because I was great, but because he is great. Because he is great. That's what it all comes down to. There's no, uh, no way possible for me to earn what Jesus did for me on the cross. There is no way. But there is no greater love than a man who will lay his life down for his friend. So, I mean, when I look at that... I'm like, man, he adores me and I can't for the life of me figure out why because I know me. So, but 
also too, in that salvation, I had to understand that, um, while you hear in sermons all the time that salvation is free, you know, come on and get it, you know, dedicate your life. Well, if salvation is free, why are you dedicating your life? I always wondered that question myself. Here's the truth. Salvation in my experience is not free because salvation to me, accepting salvation is giving my will over to the will of God giving my will over to someone who knows me better than me. That's allowing the one who knows me better than me to take the wheel of my little life truck and steer it to the finish line with all of the fuel, cargo, and repairs necessary to complete the trip. That's what salvation is to me. I have to get out of the way and let him take over. Am I perfect at doing that? No, I am not because I'm human. I want what I want. I want things to go my way. I want it to happen the way that I want it to happen. But you know what, though? When I step out of the way, when I shut up, when I move over, he does exactly what he promises to do. He works it all out for my good and his glory because he knows the plans that he has for me. Plans to prosper me and give me a good future, not to harm me at all, but to make sure that I get to where he knows that I have to go without killing myself by being stupid. He knows me. He loves me. He rescued me. And I'm pretty sure that there's going to come a time when he's going to have to rescue me again. But he promised that I can't be plucked out of his hand. I have cares in the world, but my Jesus is stronger than all of my cares, all of my concerns, all of the stumbling blocks that I put in front of myself. So, um, be encouraged. Y'all have a great day and uh, just know how much Jesus loves you. Y'all be blessed.